Good day, everybody. Rob here at WesternPacificWeather.com. It is currently 23rd of October 2010, going on about 1300 Japan standard time, 1200 Hong Kong time, and that's about 04 Zulu for those of you worldwide. A very active day out there in the Western Pacific. Yet again, we have Typhoon Meggie making landfall here in the next hour here in uh, southeast China, just northeast of Chantau, right around the Taiwan Strait here. Also watching Tropical Depression 16 Whiskey. You get a little more into that a little later here. And also uh, remnants of Tropical Depression 17 Whiskey getting wrapped up in the uh, stationary front up here to the north. Nothing really transpired out of that. But first and foremost, though, we're going to move over to the uh, Bay of Bengal and the I.O. and talk about Cyclone Geary. Or 04B, a B for Bay of Bengal here. Still a rather organized system. Made landfall yesterday in the West Arakan State down in here. And just to note, this is already a very populous area throughout this entire region. And when it did make landfall, it was actually more intense at the time of landfall than a severe cyclone Nargis. Uh, about two years ago, it killed upwards of uh, 100,000 people in this entire region right in here. So a very intense storm. And I'm showing the microwave imagery here. There still to be, continues to be a very tight wrapped core around the system. Some very high cloud tops extending uh, farther down to the south with some uh, outer rain bands extending over the Bay of Bengal. Still pumping moisture into the uh, coast here. So that's actually very bad news as the uh, rainfall is likely going to be a very deadly scenario throughout this region. Now, the good news is that at the time of landfall this system was not um, very wide the width overall actually about half the size that uh Typhoon Meggy was at the time of landfall in the Philippines, so this should decrease the storm surge. But still, at the time of landfall, likely they saw there about 10 to 12 foot storm surge with the overall width and winds out of this system. And also to note that this is an entire very low lying area throughout this region, less than uh, 10 feet in many areas. So if you see a 10 to 12 foot storm surge, it is definitely going to be a very devastating effect along the uh, coastal region. And this just showing the storm at the time of landfall from satellite imagery here. A very tight, organized system out of this. So uh, definitely looks like it may be a very devastating uh, situation for here in Burma. Uh, noting that this storm developed rather quickly, actually in less the span of 36 hours. It went from a tropical depression all the way up to this uh, very severe cyclone making landfall here. So uh, that's definitely going to be the most uh, deadliest aspect out of this storm is the lack of notice and the lack of... Uh, uh, headway on this system and as far as a warning from the uh, government so definitely a very dangerous storm I uh, haven't really got too many reports out of Burma as far as uh, any casualties or damage but I'm sure that the uh, number will start to uh, mount up here as we go through later in today and as uh, daylight starts to set on over Burma here as I already noted though that it's still a very busy day out here today so we have to move over to uh, southeast China here just northeast of Shantou we have our remnants of our typhoon Maggie starting to make landfall here I say remnants because it's a, a lack of what it was here a few days ago making landfall in the Philippines of a Category 5 typhoon. But right now, though, it looks right around a Category 1 typhoon starting to make landfall right here in southeast China. And just shown on the uh, visible imagery right in here, the system has been sheared off quite considerably. A lot of the higher cloud tops have been knocked off due to this uh, polar front jet farther up to the north here, about 30 to 40 knots of shear associated with that. So overall, though, that's really good news here for uh, Southeast China. But bad news is, though, that there still is a lot of precipitation with this. And overall, though, we've seen um, several reports of deaths, actually up to about nine here in Taiwan, with several dozens still missing due to uh, landslides and uh, flash flooding in that area. And showing the uh, Taiwan radar, you can see that several of these outer rain bands are still affecting the uh, country here. So uh, definitely a very grim situation, especially in the southwest coast here. This overall island here, though, if you actually look at this uh, topographic map, the center of the island is very mountainous. I know everybody in Taiwan already knows this, but definitely a, a very uh, grave situation as uh, some of these rain bands actually hit these mountains and uh, cause some localized flash floodings in these valleys here. And already noting that that landslide that already uh, killing up to uh, nine people near a temple here and uh, several dozen uh, is still missing and hundreds of people actually trapped in many of these locations still still is just showing the overall power and intensity coming out of Typhoon Meggy here but right now though in the next several hours here making landfall here just northeast of Shintao the outer eye wall just to note though this system is still very wide and the outer eye wall is making landfall far enough to the uh, southwest here that actual um, the fetch area still is fairly wide here uh, if it is actually making landfall farther up here here in the uh, Taiwan Strait here 
year it would decrease overall seeing the uh, the fetch area would decrease that that's the uh, given area of the uh, wind moving across the uh, water so that would actually might likely decrease the storm surge but making landfall up here near Chantal that storm surge is still going to be fairly intense up towards of uh, 10 feet in some areas so just another thing to uh, note here I'm going to try to draw a little clearer picture of what I'm actually talking about here. If the storm's making landfall right here, you still have the cyclonic churning around it, right? So you may see a movement up this way. Now, if it was going to make landfall farther up to the north, which it's not, the movement would be much shorter, just like that. So just another thing to note here, though, this still has a possibility of storm surge, as it is a weak typhoon, and also still has the possibility of dumping a lot of rainfall over here in southeast China, and definitely don't need any more rain up in that area. But uh, this system has uh, been a very intense one, and right now, though, we're going to move out farther into the western Pacific and look at Tropical Depression 16 Whiskey, which has the potential of becoming a typhoon as well now. Very disorganized at this moment in time, but it does have some low-level circulation and some higher cloud taps associated with it. And also right now, sitting in about 5 to 10 knots of wind shear, shown on this chart, shown here, uh, this chart's provided by Sims here, but just shown here, about 5 to 10 knots of overall vertical wind shear. That is fairly favorable for development. Also, the system is sitting over top of about 90 degrees water temperature down in here, so also very favorable for development. But right now, though, lack of organization out of the system. So tropical depression right around uh, 25 to 30 knots of sustained winds, but... As it starts to move farther off to the west here, it started, the wind shear is going to gradually decrease. More so, and you're going to see some more organization out of this. And this is actually the official track from JTWC here, showing it moving off to the west and gradually due north as it moves around the subtropical ridge farther out to the uh, east here and extending out in this region. So uh, that's actually good news for Okinawa. It should look like it's going to skim Okinawa to the uh, east here, but still inside the cone here as well. So it's definitely something that we need to watch. And also, I'm going to show you this chart one that I just drew up here, my thoughts on this this storm and I made a similar one for Megan it was actually fairly accurate so hopefully uh, this one stays fairly accurate as I have it missing most uh, land here uh, just skimming Okinawa as a weak typhoon though possibly around 65 gusting up to 70 knots sustained so definitely a possibility of some outer rain bands and tropical storm force winds extending over Taiwan here, or Okinawa here but right now having it moving to the uh, northwest eventually recurving as it moves around subtropical ridge depicted here and then on the uh, 30th into the 31st is going to get caught up in the upper level jet farther up here to the north that's actually moving over southeast China and extending over Pan here and so a possibility of some uh, outer rain band rain showers here for the uh, Halloween season uh, that weekend next weekend here so uh, just another thing to note for the Kanto plane all the uh, anime gurus that like to go out for uh, Halloween may uh, get a little rain on the parade but right now though uh, definitely seeing this system is going to be recurving so the Philippines looks far out of the question as far as a landfall but that is all for today, everybody. Please continue to feed me reports out there from uh, Taiwan and Southeast China and even the Philippines still, though. I know you guys are still recovering down here, and I'll likely have an update tomorrow, basically, on the overall destructive force that came out of here from uh, Maggie and also on uh, 04B out there in the Bay of Bengal. Uh, not too many reports out of there, but hopefully if anybody on here is from that region, please just let me know so you can uh, pass this on to everybody else here. But that's all for it right now, though. If you have any questions, please field them to me at westernpacificweather.com. You can also find me at storm2k.org as usual. So uh, thank you for all the information out there, everybody. Have a great day and stay safe.